Hey, good morning, family. Pastor Artie here with your manna and coffee. You know, in Acts chapter 20, verse 32, it tells us, And now, brethren, I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified favor. Being commended. Paul is getting ready to leave, but he's commending and and talking to the disciples that are following him in the churches and saying, I commend you. I give you favor. I have set you up. I'm giving you everything that you need right now. I'm I'm recommending you to God. You know, it's the same way when you pray for people. When you pray for people, you're commending them unto God. You're giving them over and saying, Here, God, they have a need. Meet that need. But he says, I commend you to God and the word of his grace. You know, his grace basically is everything that was promised to you is now fulfilled through Jesus Christ. The unmerited favor of God's grace. You know, we live in such an exciting time. You always hear the dispensation of this and that. And then you also hear that one line, the dispensation of grace. You realize that's where you live today? You live in some exciting times because you live in the dispensation of grace. We are the final generation, or no, I'm, I can't say generation, but we are the final dispensation before the second coming of Christ. Everything is being done. All we need to do is see the, the abomina- abomination of desolation be put into his position, and things will really start falling apart. Now, I know you guys may be sitting there thinking and saying, well, you know, are you a pre-trib, a mid-trib, a post-trib? I'm not any kind of a trip. You know why? Because I realized that when Paul was teaching the church, He made it a point to say, when you see these things happen, don't believe them. And only when you see the desolation of abomination be put in, then you will see it. He says, when you hear about Jesus is over here, Jesus is over there, he says, don't believe it. He talks about the end times and the tribulation starting. He actually talks about it. And why is he telling the church? Don't you think there's something there? If we're a pre-trib, we don't have to worry about that. If you're a mid-trib, yeah, you don't have to worry about it. If you're a post-trib, guess what? You don't have to worry about it. Because as long as your heart is with him, you have nothing to worry about. I would rather lose my head for the gospel's sake than to give in and take a mark and saying, I want to be counted with the rest of them. But here in verse 32, he's telling us that he is commending us to God and to the word of grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance. Our inheritance is with God, with the kingdom, not here on earth. I don't expect to be here with the new Jerusalem. I'm not Jewish. I'm a Gentile. See, I believe God's word when he says my inheritance is in heaven. He says when I die from here is to be present with him and there I will forever be with him in the heavenlies. Why do I want to come back down to this earth earth when he said, I prepare for you a mansion. If it were not so, I would not have told you. Because if we sit there and say, well, you know, we're going to go to heaven, we're going to live in this mansion, but then when he brings the new Jerusalem down, we're going to come down and be here. You know, we're calling God a liar. Let's not do that. He's given us an inheritance. You know, we have obtained favor in Christ. The children of Israel has the favor of God, but we had to earn that favor. And we've earned that favor when we've given our hearts to Christ. You know, Romans 1 talks about the faith of God. All through it, you see about talking about faith. And there we were, you know, through faith we have been saved by grace, not of ourselves, it's a free gift of God. 
lest any man should boast. It's our faith. It's that favor that God has given to us through our faith that is going to give us that inheritance, family. I don't know about you, but I would be excited today about being able to have an inheritance based upon what I believe and what I stand firm on, the Word of God. Today, family, don't be confused. Don't be misled. If we go before the tribulation, praise God, then we have nothing to worry about. If we go in the middle of the tribulation, praise God, we have nothing to worry about. And if we go at the end of the tribulation, praise God, we have nothing to worry about. Why? Because we have obtained the favor of God and he has guaranteed us an inheritance. Whether you keep your head or you lose it, it doesn't matter. Why be blinded to the fact of what Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians. Don't be afraid, guys. This world is gonna go on. It's gonna go on to destruction. That's where it's going, straight to destruction. And where are we going? We're going straight to heaven. I think for all of us, that should be the theme of our line. Hey, I'm heaven bound. I'm not earthly bound, I'm heaven bound. Today, family, if you don't know Jesus, you're living a life on the edge, on a razor's edge, and the only thing that's going to happen is going to be death. So, Lord, I pray for all those out there that don't know you, that they would accept you into their heart. To say, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner and I come to you and accept the grace and love and mercy that you have for me, that you died on the cross and you rose again just for me and that you've given me an inheritance. I accept that inheritance, and I want to live for you and let you live through me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, family of God, you claim your inheritance. It's right there, Acts 20, 32. You ought to make that one of your life scriptures. Right there, it's an inheritance. All of you that are sanctified, he has given you an inheritance through his grace, his unmerited favor, because he has commended you. He has given you his favor to give you an inheritance. I don't know about you, but working here on earth, it's a drag. You know, and those of you that still work nine to five, man, I pray for you all the time because I know how hard it is. I did it for 32 years. It's tough. And now, I'm still doing the pastor's position and the ministry that God has called me to, even within that 32-year construct. And why? It's because God told me to. He didn't tell me to rely on the church and its tithing to meet my needs. Paul set the example for us, and I'll go into that study tomorrow, how Paul will show that we no longer tithe, but we give an offering unto the Lord. The tithe was Old Testament law. It was given by the order of Melchizedek to take care of the priests. So when you hear pastors saying, oh, you know, the tithe is to help support us. No, it's not. It's your giving, your love offerings, your gifts to God is to take care of the church. The building that you meet in and all those little things that need the, to be benevolent, to give to those that don't have, to give it up. Blessed is it to give more than it is to receive. That's what the church should be doing. We don't support the pastors. You don't support me. I have a check coming in. I worked hard for that. So you don't have to support me. But if you support the ministry, that's a different thing. Today, family, walk in the inheritance that God has given you, and you're going to find out that you're going to love life so much more because you know the word of truth in your life. May God bless you. May you have an awesome week this week. Linda and I hope that this week will be the most blessed, fulfilled week you've ever had. May God pour out his blessings, his love, his mercy, and his grace upon you, each one of you and keep you in all that you do. 
God bless you guys, the staff here at Rock Ministries. We are continuing to pray for you every day. Know this, you're covered. If you have any needs, you can contact me through my Facebook page at Rock Ministries on Facebook. Post that prayer request. Me and my staff will be more than happy to pray for that and bring it up before the Lord. Or you can IM me anytime. And we'll pray for those needs. We love you guys. We're praying for you, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Love you. Bye.